Good evening everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello and welcome. My name is Mawahib. So in today's video, I really want to focus on how to calculate fragrance oils. But before I get into this video, I would love for you guys to click on that subscribe button down below. Give this video a huge thumbs up. Comment down below on what videos you'd like to see from me in the future. And please don't forget to turn your post notifications on so you guys can get notified every time I post. So with that being said, let's just get straight into it. So I've been making candles for over a year now and I love candles I love making them the one part that really gets me a bit confused or maybe the one part that probably is not my favorite in the candle making um, process is actually the maths part maths is not my strongest point but I work on it as much as I can because I do need it in working out my wax and my fragrance oils in my candles so luckily I've come across a video about a few weeks ago I'm not too sure when exactly but the video is called how to calculate fragrance oils oils and I'll pop that video in the description down below. That video is by someone named Stacy, who is the owner of Mother Naked or the founder of Mother Naked and uh, she actually within her video she referenced a blog. The blog is from NI Candle Supplies and that is what I want to focus on in this video. NI Candle Supplies actually mentioned why my calculations are a little bit off. If you have been calculating the same calculations as I have this whole time please don't be disheartened, please don't be discouraged, it's okay. We're meant to make mistakes we're meant to have challenges along the way in any area of our lives not necessarily just when making candles we are meant to have mistakes and challenges along our journey because they are there to help us grow learn and thrive and evolve during our process so please please do not be disheartened or discouraged when you guys are watching this video there's a solution to every problem literally now that I've said that let me just explain how I'm gonna run this video I am going to read the blog off of my phone and you guys are gonna see a screen screenshot or a screen recording on your screen just so you can follow through what I'm reading just so you guys don't get lost or confused. I'm also going to leave a link to the blog in the description down below just if you guys want to go and have a read on your own in your own time then I'll leave that in the description down below for you guys. With that being said my phone is right here let's get straight into reading understanding where my mistakes were in my calculations and passing that to you guys just in case you guys are making the same mistakes as me and if you guys have any questions please pop them in the comment section down below and I'm more than happy to help. All right guys, let's just get straight into reading right now. So I'm at the NI Candle Supplies and I'm reading it off my phone like I've mentioned and I'm gonna go ahead and start from the first paragraph. So the first paragraph goes, you've worked out you need 300 grams of candle wax to fill your base and you know your wax can take a scent load of 10%. So you take 10% from 300 grams which is 30 grams. Therefore you need 30 grams of fragrance oil and 270 grams of wax. Pretty straight straightforward right moving on before we go any further let's talk about what you've done so far and what issues you may run into tunneling poor scent throw and wicks not staying lit could be a real issue here because the calculations you just used isn't right so now that i've read the first paragraph reflecting back to my own work that my calculations are off normally what i do is take 10 percent from my 200 grams of wax and it gives me 20 grams of fragrance oils but it isn't right so i'm going to carry on to the next part of the blog which is what exactly a scent load. There is some confusion in the industry about what exactly scent load is. We simply explain it as the ratio of fragrance oil to the weight of your wax. Yes, 30 grams is 10% of 300 grams, but it's not the 10% of the wax weight, which is what you need. A 10% scent load of 300 grams would actually be 30 grams of fragrance oil added to 300 grams of wax, making your finished product weight 330 grams. Let me pause here. So right now that I'm reading it out loud with you, I've obviously read this blog a few times um, just to help me understand where my mistakes are and why my calculations are wrong. I'm gonna explain it to you guys, of course, out loud as well just so you guys can understand why my calculations are wrong. Let me take my 30 centiliter candle container as an example so you guys can understand it better. So what I do is I measure 200 grams of wax for my 30 centiliter candle container and then from that I measure 10% of fragrance oil which is 20 grams of fragrance oil. So what I do at the end I add my 20 grams to my 200 grams of wax and that actually gives me a total weight, a total product weight of 220 grams 
which is actually quite off. Now that I'm reading it out loud, it makes much more sense. I'm not supposed to have an overall weight of 220 grams. I'm actually supposed to have an overall weight of 200 grams. Am I making sense or are, are you guys lost? If you guys are lost or confused in any shape, way or form, please pop them in the comment section down below. Let me just move on to the next part of the paragraph. Add in 30 grams of oil to 270 grams of wax, wax out at approximately 11.11% fragrance oil. Way more than the 10% sand load your wax can take. If you keep working out this way, you always overload your wax with fragrance oil. It's good to know what happens if your wax does become overloaded with fragrance oil. You could be experiencing other common issues without knowing it's your oil to wax ratio causing the issue. Here's what you should look out for. The, t the wick tends to struggle and will only achieve a small flame or sometimes the flame will die completely. A struggling wick could result in candle tunneling or not achieve a full melt pool. The candle can also have poor hot throw as there is not enough heat being generated to allow the fragrance to, to release from the wax. Let me pause here. So as you guys saw, I actually have more than the recommended fragrance oil needed in my candle. So I'm actually overloading my wax with fragrance oil. Another point that I want to bring up for that is I'm actually, if I was to sell that candle, I'm not actually CLP compliant. And the reason why the CLP labeling only covers you for 10% fragrance oil, it doesn't cover you for more than that. If I was to sell that candle, I'm actually not CLP compliant. And that's another point that actually Stacy from Mother Naked uh, mentions in her video. And again, thank you so much for that video. I'm really grateful that she actually posted that video because it helped out so much. And I hope that I can help out uh, more of you and you guys in this video today. Uh, they also mentioned problems that my candle may be dealing with or may be struggling with if my wax is overloaded with fragrance oil. I've never actually experienced any of the issues that they've listed out. The only issue that I've been experiencing a lot with my candles is mushrooming on the first hour burn. Like as soon as I burn it, the wick starts mushrooming. And another one is flickering. The mushrooming actually makes sense that my candle wax is actually overloaded with fragrance. Maybe that's why I'm getting mushrooming at the very start of me testing my candle. Candles. So now that I know how to calculate the correct fragrance scent load for my candles, hopefully I won't be experiencing any mushrooming, especially on my like first round of burn testing. You know, I don't want to have like mushrooming on the first hour burn. And another reason why I may have mushrooming is the wick is too big or just in general, the wick just mushrooms on its own. But it's a good thing to think about. Um, another thing is flickering. Flickering can be just from the wick in general or the wick is too big. I don't think it has anything to do with my fragrance load. If that is the reason that would show me in my common candles when I'm going to be burn testing with them, of course, with my new calculations. For the most exciting part of this video is actually how to calculate our fragrance scent load properly. And literally, Anai Candle Supply has sorted that problem for us and they've provided us with a candle calculator. So I'm going to use a candle calculator with you guys here right now. I'm going to pop a screen recording of how I'm going to use it. My desired weight in grams for my 30 centiliter candle container is now 220 grams it's no longer 200 grams and guys it works out perfectly it's literally where I want it to sit in my candle and I really like it anyway I'm gonna stop rambling so as you guys can see here it says the desired weight in grams which is 220 grams in my case for the 30 centiliter candle container and I'm gonna use a 10% uh, ratio you can of course use an 8% 6% 7% whatever desired fragrance percentage you guys like you can put that into the calculator and total number of candles I'm just gonna put one as you guys can see here, the grams of wax needed is 200 and I need 20 grams of oil. Um, if you guys want to make more candles, as you guys can see there, the last uh, the last part of the calculator, it says total number of candles. You can put 10 candles and it will show you how much wax you need and how much fragrance oil you need. So that is the solution to all of our problems. Before I end this video and completely let you guys go, guys, I'm a naturally, naturally curious person. I love I love knowing the reason behind my numbers. I wanna know the reason why to everything, the why, the how, the where, you name it. I just wanna know. I wanna know more, I always wanna know more. So for me to, uh, yes, it's super easy to just put in the numbers that you need for your candles and it's done for you. But for me personally, I love 
knowing the reason behind the numbers which is why i done even more research i actually watched a candle curator who's from the us and she's literally one of the one of my favorite candle curators in the us and she has a video up on a, a formula for uh, fragrance oil and wax and i've actually been testing that formula out in my own time as well as using the candle calculator so um, i've been working with that formula for a few weeks i'm trying to get my head around it and it's pretty straightforward i did have to get used to it a few times but i thought i'd want to make a part two for this video using that candle formula so i hope you guys don't mind that i am going to be doing a part two for this video and it is going to be a formula to figure out the wax and the um, fragrance oil needed for our candles. Maths is not my strongest point but I will never not stop learning. I love learning, I enjoy learning and especially candles are something that I do. We do need maths for candles. I do know that the candle community is huge and I know all of us have different ways of measuring candle wax and fragrance oil and just different ways of making candles. Everything will be linked in the description down below like the usual and I hope I haven't missed out anything in this video. I do have my notes here so I made sure I covered everything anyway guys I'm gonna end today's video right here and say please make sure that you click on that subscribe button down below give this video a huge thumbs up comment down below on what videos you'd like to see from me in the future and don't forget to turn your post notifications on so you guys can get notified every time I post so with that being said have a lovely Wednesday evening a great week and I'll see you guys very soon bye guys